Shalom Israel, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rekakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing this work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. All right, and I wanted to do, uh, just weigh in on, um, I was watching this uh, debate, as you can see, uh, I forget this dude's name in the middle, but as you can see on the left-hand side, Tommy Sotomayor, and on the right hand side, you see the uh you know the uh the stand up comedian uh Lunell, you know, which abominable goddamn bald ass tennis ass she got. But um, you know, they get into uh debating about uh I believe it's blackness culture or something else like that, you know, and uh the state of uh men and women, you know. And, um I didn't watch a great deal of it, but from the point of a couple points in which I watched you know, uh, some points was completely off, and in some points they had really good points. Now, our people argue and debate about these different points or different matters of the state of so-called black people, right? But little do they know that all of the answers that they seek is truly within the scriptures. Now, they give some good explanations, but ultimately it all stems from the, the scriptures, man. You know, and everything that they're bringing out is uh, just a part of the whole situation. You know, Esau setting up different things uh, to constantly create a situation to where our people automatically fail. But it's all that to start with us disobeying the Lord, the, the Lord's laws, statutes and commandments. All right. So I'm going to just play a little bit of this and um and I'm going to get into some scriptures and a little bit of edification. All right. So I want to get into um uh, there's a a battle between men and women and especially liberal women hating men. And do you agree that there is a warfare going on between men and women? I sort of do. Because it's been designed that way, and so it worked. And who? And, and and she's exactly right about this. It's been designed this way, and it has worked. Okay. Ultimately, like I said, everything goes back to the curses. But what Esau setting up these different things to create this problem, you know, because they know it's all about what divide and conquer, and especially when it comes to a woman, because they know how gullible a woman is. Going back to what. Uh, the uh, in, in the uh, the garden, man. You know, the garden of Eden. When what ultimately, the woman was deceived by the serpent, okay. Which in today, which now represents you so-called uh, Edom, you so-called white people, man. You Edomites, man. You damn devils who deceived the woman. So Esau, knowing these different things, they know within the the best. The, the best way to get to a man, what is through the woman, and they have succeeded at that, man. You know, who designed it and why? Well, I believe that the powers that be back, you know, this is a 30 year disaster in the making, and when music and arts and things were taken out of school, and I lived in Oakland, the drugs were dropped down. The families were losing things. Welfare was rampant between the white and the black community. And the only way you could get it is if you didn't have a man in the house. When that started happening, women got their hustle on and had to be more independent. With that independence, you lose some femininity, I believe. And so there comes the attitude that I don't need your ass mm -hmm. because you don't. Because they don't want you to have a family. Their powers to be. They want it to be warfare between the brothers and the sisters, the men and the women, the whites and the blacks, everything. This is all part of the big plan. And unfortunately, now we have the Dr. Evil of Austin Powers sitting in the White House. And he has or helped. He's the, he's the, the wizard. He's the Wizard of Oz. And, and everybody is up in Oz going crazy, and he's just stirring the pot for more racial disharmony, more 
hatred amongst our own race, more trash between men and women. It's the crumbling of a nation right before our very eyes. So, yes, I believe. Now, she made some real good points here, and I want to chime in before I get to uh, Tommy Sotomayor and, and let him speak, because he pretty much uh, articulates the same, he pretty much says the same point, but he articulates it much better than what she did and in, and in fewer words. But what she said was definitely on point, right? But the key thing that they're missing, you know, is our nationality, who we are, how did these things truly come about, what set it, the, what set the precedence for Esau to be able to do these different things. This is what all our people are missing. They are all missing the foundation of why we are in the condition of why we are in it, all right? So, and of course, what it goes back into the curses, man. You know, uh, uh, basic things. Us so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the people of the Most High. We are the children of Israel, according to the scriptures and according to history that we can thoroughly prove, man. Through physical, uh, uh, through a uh, uh, physical evidence of, of history, and also through the spirit, which is much more important, man. You know, the Mosai didn't leave us out here blind that we couldn't find our way. We're finding our way through this valley of darkness, which is America, man. Which is the the, the valley of the shadow of death for us as Israelites, man. You know. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just bring out, you know, some of the basics, right? Starting off at Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So since we didn't follow through with those commandments in which the Most High set forth, what their curses that are written within this 28th chapter that speaks to our situations perfectly because this is where it started from us disobeying the most high. So this is Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and toward the, toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So that explains why, you know, a lot of times what our fathers were absent from the homes or fathers left their children. Cause this was ordained, from the Most High as a part of the curses that will befall our people, okay? And our eyes being evil towards our brother, what Hispanics, so-called Hispanics being uh, evil towards, you know, the so-called blacks and so-called blacks against so-called blacks, so on and so forth. That's how they say, what, black on black crime? That's brother on brother crime, man. You know what I'm saying? The same thing. So now let's bring it to the to the woman, man. Oh, and, uh, and also problems what? With the man and the woman because his his. I shall be evil toward not only his brother, but toward his woman as well, man, right? But uh, verse 56, it says, The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her I shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward the children that which she shall bear, for she shall eat them, for the one of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. So this describes the nature of the so-called black and Hispanic woman of today. They're not tender and delicate no more. You know what I'm saying? Their eyes definitely evil toward the man and toward the children. That's why Tommy Sotomayor, he's always getting into videos about the things that women are doing and the, the carelessness of how they're taking care of their children. You know? And how in every uh, situation now with women, they're trying to what rule over the man. And that's what Lunell is getting into as far as the, you know, the powers that be, what the government, you Edomites, these elites, you know, setting everything up as their grand plan to keep the man out of the house, to disrupt the whole family structure, right? And creating this thing within a woman's head that I don't need a man because what I have you, I have Esau, I have the government to protect me. And this is all a part of their, their cruelty, man, right? So uh, this is uh, Isaiah 32 and 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh for bright. So the instruments of what the, the churl, meaning what basically a deceitful or fraudulent or fake or wicked person are evil, 
and this is and divide and conquer and everything they've done amongst the so-called black and Hispanic household. These are all different instruments, different devices that they use to bring us down and to destroy us as a people so that we can't thrive. But we were brought over here within the society to thrive. We were brought over here to suffer punishment, man. Right. According to uh, the book of Baruch, <clears throat> the fourth chapter. Right. So Baruch four and six. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved Yahweh to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the Most High. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nerfed you, that, that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of the Most High coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O that ye dwell about Zion. The Most High have brought upon me great mourning, for I saw the captivity of my sons and of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. So this is why we're going through these different things and why we were brought over here to the Americas, okay? Because we moved the Most High to wrath, so that we could wake up and and come back to our true estate and recognize who our true and living power is, man. You know. And also how she got into aspects of the woman, because what the woman in, in today's uh, stance is so proud, being that the, uh, this certain amount of power was given unto them by the so-called white man. But I'm going to let Tommy Sotomayor speak, and then I'll bring out a few more scriptures uh, before I end this lesson. Amazing. You Do you believe there's a war for between men and women today? Yes, because there's a war on masculinity. And, 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 hey, and that, that's the key thing right there. There's a war on masculinity. You have uh, men wearing dresses and all different type of stuff, and and more of our, the men of our nation are turning more faggots than anything nowadays, man. You know, and, and and starting off like with stuff like the video in which I did uh, about Leor Cohen and and how he's the head of music, and he's putting that image on people like Young Thug and other rappers to wear lipstick, paint their their nails, fingernail polish, and wear these goddamn dresses. There's an attack on uh, uh, Israelite masculinity, man, to demasculate us, man, and to constantly put the woman more in authority and more in power over the man, which is not the natural order of things, you know, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And who started this and why? That would be the liberal agenda, because once you destroy families, which I agree with everything with man said at the beginning, once you destroy families, then the number one protector of liberty, in my opinion, is family. Right. Because it makes it difficult for the state to come in and infiltrate the family. Well, once you break up the family, who becomes the daddy? I have a thing on my show where I call it the white daddy. You turn to the government. The white daddy comes in and take care of you. You don't need your black man anymore. You don't need your family anymore. There was a time in which we had families at a greater rate than white people did. So what happened? Your great society. Who instituted great society? Liberals. Liberals continue to push a war between men and women. And when you say liberal, are these black and white liberals? Yes. Yeah. I talked about it last night on my show. We got a Me Too movement. But yet three out of four... That was the point. Uh, he did mention something else about that, but that was the main point that I wanted to get up, up out of that. Um, I don't want to do too much skipping around in this uh, video because there's a few points ahead. But uh, yeah, I believe that was the main thing. And, um, and ultimately... It's something else that Lunell said, uh, I believe it's around like the 15, 16 minute mark or something like that, uh, and per, uh, pertaining to as far as now in, in times you will have the woman, you know, having a child, but if the father's not around, will make a statement and say, uh, I'm your mama and your daddy, you know what I'm saying? Which is totally false. You only know how to be, a, a, you barely know how to be a woman, let alone how to be a man and how to a, a guide a young man. You know what I'm saying? And something else that Tommy Sotomayor said, he said was that you have too many people that are not men trying to define what a man is. And that's particularly women. They tell you everything that, oh, you're not a man if you're not doing this. You're not a man if you're not doing that. They got too much goddamn mouth and they can't even describe what a man is. They don't know a man's a true role because they barely know their own damn role can barely tell uh, shit about their own selves, man. So who the hell is doing? So how the hell can a woman define what a man is when they can't even define their own selves, man. They can't even define their own nature. They're too busy trying to uh, uh, be proud, go out to the club and be stubborn and be like a damn man to even recognize their own nature, you know? 
So real quick, this is uh, the book of Proverbs 7 and um, yeah, 7 and 11. It says, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. And that's the typical so-called black woman now uh, in today's time, man. You know, and as Tommy Sotomayor uh, was getting into, you know, and, and, and stuff about the man and woman. Now, you know what I'm saying? The, the man, and they also get into... Uh, more so of defining what the man is, but the man is supposed to re what, represent uh, protection. You know what I'm saying? The man is supposed to represent the head of the household. All of the above uh, characteristics that go with that role as being the head. Okay? And and as being the head, what? You have to hedge about your possessions, hedge about your family, hedge about the things that you have, okay, that belong unto you. And now a few scriptures on the word hedge real quick. Uh, this is uh, Ecclesiasticus 26 and um, 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. Well, referring to the woman, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. So any man that seems that they could provide some form of protection or sort some sort of financial stability, a woman is willing to rock with that because they don't truly know how to choose a man. And according to uh, Sirach, the 42nd chapter, it tells you about how the father uh, uh, wake up and he break of sleep for the care over the daughter and how the father is supposed to give the, his daughter over to a man of understanding. Because it's not within a woman's nature to truly think logically. They're all based off of feelings and emotions. So that, you know, they're completely twisted in, in their mind. And they're very gullible and dumb. Especially in today's time, man. Right? So this uh, Sirach 36 and um, 25. It says, where no hedge is, but where no protection is, there the possession is spoiled. Women are a possession unto a man. So if a woman doesn't have a, a man, a righteous man, what? <laughs> the possession is spoiled. She's spoiled rotten, man. And she's been spoiled rotten by the so-called white man and by the philosophies of today's standards that make a woman think that she's equal unto a man, can do better than a man, can uh, 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 do everything a man can do and more. You know what I'm saying? All of this wickedness, man. It's all the philosophies, the wines of the so-called white man that is poisoning our people, man. You know what I'm saying? And what the scriptures say? Through a woman, we all die, man. This is why a woman can cannot lead, period. And isn't meant to lead, isn't fit to lead, man. And he that have no wife will wander up and down mourning. This is uh, Sirach 28 and 24. Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns. So what we propose to protect our possessions very thoroughly. But by the curses being upon us and by the most high allowing Esau to destroy the household and able to take the man out of the household and able to put us in slavery and able to separate the families, we could never thoroughly hedge our possession, which is our family, our household structure. So how could we uh, uh, hedge it about with thorns? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If this is Esau's world, the power has been given unto him. We can't. So therefore, what? We are destroyed people. Ultimately, as I said in the beginning, going back to us breaking the Mosai's law, statutes, and commandments, right? So look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns and bind up thy silver and gold. Okay, because your, 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 uh, the family structure is supposed to be uh, silver and gold unto you. Your, your, your sons are supposed to carry on your line. You know what I'm saying? And supposed to carry on your good name. Right? Your woman is supposed to be a reflection of you. You know? Everything that you have is supposed to be uh, uh, hedged about with thorns, meaning thoroughly protected. By, your, by the most high being behind you, backing you, strengthening you in everything in which you do, and you having a strong mental fortitude to handle your responsibilities and stuff as a man and serve him first and foremost above all things, which is our top priority, top responsibility. All right? So, uh, and based upon what he said, too, you know, he said, uh, Tommy Sotomayor was talking about what this is all, what the liberal agenda, right? The liberal agenda. So based upon that, I'm going to play this one clip real quick, right? Of course, brothers should know this uh, famous uh, clip, a segment from the interview with uh, uh, Alex Jones and um, Aaron Russo, 
or who they killed when he spilled uh, some of the Rockefeller secrets, man, you know? The thing they told me was that um, he well, we was at the house one night, and uh, we, were talking, we were talking, and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. I said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded women's lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all of the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. What well, and, and they was able to do this work because, like I did in a, in a lesson with uh, uh, Lero Cohen about how the so-called Jews own 96% of the media. So they was able to put this out there and flood it out to the masses of the people to get this movement going, man. Okay? So let me bring it back a little bit. Funded women's lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all of the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was we couldn't tax half the population before women's lib. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. It breaks up their family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. Now, you see that? Everything of the so-called white man's agenda, you damn Edomites, was to destroy our family structure, man. Everything. This is why he is the devil that the Bible speaks of, because there's nothing upright within him, period, man. So from the Mosai uh, coming at us for not obeying his law, statutes, and commandments, gave us over into the hands of our enemies, and now our enemies are using these different devices and tactics, uh, crafty counsel or methodologies to slowly but surely break down the household, man. And they've done this for generations on top of generations on top of generations. And what's been most detrimental is from around what the time of the 60s and the 70s until now, man. Because now their plan has been in full force. And now we can see the destruction of our people <laughs> a, a, a thousand times full within today's society, man. Jake is effed up out here, man. Straight up and down, man. And so those are the two primary reasons for women's love, which I put up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure. You know? Aaron, did you know that Gloria Steinem in one of her own books now admits the CIA funded this magazine? No. Now, now look at that. Gloria Steinem, how the CIA used feminism to destabilize society. Meaning what? To go at the family structure, to go at the man, you know what I'm saying? To try to create this uh, egalitarian society where everybody is uh, equal, you know what I'm saying? But really, they putting the woman over the man because they know that women cause confusion and destruction, okay? And these are all their tactics, man. All of their tactics. But yet, the woman within today's society, especially of our women, they all take this to the head. And thinking that it's all about them. It ain't about none of you hoes, man. Straight up, it ain't about none of you hoes. All right? This is Esau and his deliberate plan to destroy the Israelite man and to bring everything down about us. And you wicked woman out there are helping to fulfill Esau's agenda, man. You know? So, so you know, with that, um, you know, I hope this segment was edifying me bringing these different points out. Like I said, it was much more in that interview, but um, Lord willing, if I decide to do any more, I'll break it up into segments and, and make this into a small series because it got into a few good, different good points of me watching about like 20 or so minutes uh, of that debate. You know what I'm saying? And brothers, y'all can check it out uh, for yourselves if y'all want to. As you can see, uh, it's on Tommy Sotomayor's page, one-on-one uh, -on -one with Tommy Sotomayor, Tommy Sotomayor versus comedian Lunell on politics, feminism, and race. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? I encourage brothers to check this out. It's pretty good from what I watch. And, of course, there's some on-off points. But like I said, I watched up to the 20-something minute mark. So, 
you know, uh, you know, with that, you know, I just hope this uh, segment was edifying. And I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, double one to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the Lekabdeh, doing this work of faith and labor of love with true sincerity. Shalom.